Hey everybody and welcome. So I want to show you guys the new Guide 12 versus the old Guide 10 Plus. Now they look pretty much identical on the built in the same design except the biggest difference is the faceplate. The Guide 10 Plus has a analog switch right here with a LED indicator, one amp output USB little LED light, 100 millimeter, uh, 100 uh, milliwatt, 1.1 amp, 6.5 volt solar input, and a 5 volt mini USB 0.8 amp input. This charges at 3 hours, and this charges at 6 hours. Three modes. You have off, on for output. Sorry, my finger can't get the switch, and then LED on. Now the LED cannot be uh, the LED cannot be on for the output to be on at the same time unless you have it plugged in. This does support pass-through charging. Um, so basically means that power will pass through into the USB port when you are plugged into either a USB mini or a solar port. Although this is one amp so the mini USB port is not going to give uh, full charge to this. So you will leak power from your batteries. Um, so use the solar port if you want to. This though is outdated so they don't have this anymore on their new guide 12. Um, because their newer panels just support USB Type A and no solar input panel system anymore. So, with the new Guide 12, um, also uh, with the stock Guide 10 Plus before I move on there, this normally comes with this adapter, um, no AAA, but uh, it comes with 2300 ma nickel mill hydride cells from Goal Zero, name brand. Now for the Guide 12, the biggest difference is the faceplate and the batteries. You also still get this cartridge of the AAA uh, cartridge system, but it comes with double A's. Double A's are 2500 ma nickel mill hydrides. The faceplate difference is this is a digital button but it is still a button, it's not a touch sensitive system. Uh, I know everybody thinks it's a touch sensitive system since it's uh, kind of flat, but no, it's still now a uh, digital, uh, it's still a push button, but it's digital. What that means is that there is always power running through the entire chip, and then when you click this, it senses that it's active. And the light on my phone is not going to be able to show the indicator button coming on. There you go. You can see it for a moment. So there's one little bug issue um, with this new model. And that is that if you take out the batteries and um, I'll turn off the light for a moment. If you turn, uh, take out the batteries and... Uh, push the indicator after you put them back in, it will show that the LEDs are only one LED, but they are actually full. That's the only issue I've ran into. Another person mentioned they had noise issue when the batteries were plugged in. Um, I don't have that. So the newest addition is the USB port here and the USB port here. So this USB port, instead of one amp, it now supports two amp output when using double A's. But they recommend when using triple A's that you use one amp output. And I'll tell you in a second how to switch that. But now this input is now a USB-C input charging only. It's not bio-directional. And it is only up to one amp output, I mean input. So it's not two amp or three amp like a lot of people would probably think and hope for. It's only one amp. But this can charge at four hours. 
So that's pretty nice. It's down uh, instead of having six or three. Now the change modes on the back it says to push this three times. One, two, three. And it'll change two LEDs here to indicate that it is in low power mode. And then to turn it to high power mode again, push it three times and then the LEDs will come flash four times. And that means it's in high powered mode. This is 12 watts of power output. And I believe, I'm not sure if I can get this. And this is the back of the old system. Doesn't tell the wattage, but I think this is about 11 to 10.5 watt hours. Now, I know everybody's probably going to say, what's the point of having these AA rechargeable things when we have lithium now? Well, a lot of people like these kind of flexibility for AA's and AAA uh, charging power banks because you can hot swipe them compared to having to wait for recharging uh, a big power pack or something like that that takes normally like two to four to six hours to charge a lithium power pack. Now I know everybody's going to say well this takes about four hours to charge just these batteries and you have to charge all four at the same time. There is a benefit for um, their charging methods and they do have a uh, balancing effect which means that um, it will fill all four batteries and not just like charge one and then the other three are basically completely dead. It will charge one, then charge the other, charge that, and charge that, even though it is a four slot only system. And um, like I said, it's flexibility, so that means that you can hot swipe the batteries for more or use this as a power bank, I mean, um, or use the batteries as a ability to put in other devices. So it's very nice and flexible. Um, I know a lot of people will say, well, two amps is not enough anymore. We are up to three amps and even up to three amps at nine volts, which charges our phones now. And the capacity on this is 2,500 ma, which is 12 watts. That's only like equivalent to uh, a 1680 or uh, 18650 cell at about 3200 ma and that is still not going to charge a 5000 ma cell phone so you would need two of these to charge it yes technically that is true but again the flexibility of these devices are a lot better you can use the double A's you can recharge it or you use the power bank ability so having now two amp output that is going to charge a lot of devices better than the stock one amp system is much better now. So I'll see you guys later and peace out.